everybody and welcome to Mod Island Community Garden here in the uh, North Strand of Dublin City. Um, today um, we're going to be doing a workshop for Crinion and Oog on how to make um, nature journals. Um, my name is Breda Jackson, this is my daughter Ella who's going to be helping me out today. Nature journals are great for recording your observations when you're out and about in nature, so when you're out on your walks or out even in your garden um, to be able to record through paintings or uh, photographs or prints or um, even poetry and then stick them in your journal. So what we will be doing today is making a, a cover from recycled materials and we'll do a nice uh, create a nice print for the uh, for the cover and I'll show you how to um, create pages for it as well and give you some inspiration later um, on how to fill it up. The Crinu page that uh, the event is on um, has a PDF tutorial as well which you can download and has all sorts of links. We're going to start by gathering up the materials that we'll need for, for the cover. Uh, and the first thing you're going to need is some, some cardboard. So any type of cardboard from an old box or um, packaging, uh, whatever, whatever uh, you have to hand. Um, and you choose you can choose any size to make the journal um, um, in I've chosen about an, an a5 size which is half of you know what you normally get in this kind of size paper so that's handy so you can create your pages about half the size of that um, so you essentially cut out your um, your card to whatever size you want the the journal to be um, using a ruler and, and, and the scissors. So it's as simple as that. Once you have your cover cut out, just measure it, um, you know, equally on either side and use a, a hole punch like this to, to punch holes, you know, in the center um, of those marked pieces. So equidistant, more or less, from, from each edge. And you can use then that as a guide for your paper. So the paper that we're going to use can be anything. You can use recycled paper or uh, paper that is uh, like sugar paper, which is pretty um, inexpensive. Any, any paper that you have to hand, even in an old sketchbook, um, you can tear pages out of that. So I have a, like a range of papers here, including some recycled paper like this. You know, you can use something like this envelope. Um, which are really, really lovely inside when you, um, when you open them out. And you can cut them down to size and you can even use the window as a frame for a photograph or a drawing or... Um, so they're really handy. So I've, I've actually cut one up already. So you can see how, how, how it goes. And you can put something in behind it and then stick the back together and that can be, become one page. Essentially, let's get started on cutting the paper for... Um, for this for this particular cover I've cut mine to size already so they're just a tiny bit smaller than the cover you'll see so that the cover goes over them and essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to line up the holes that I made in the cover and make sure that they're more or less inside okay so I'm just going to get my pencil and I'm just going to mark the holes in the paper so that I can punch them and they can be in the same position as the cover. So now you can see the marks on the paper and I'm just going to use this hole punch to, um, to punch the holes through. Okay, so now they line up with the cover and now all I have to do is punch the other side of the cover. So I do the exact same thing, I just line it up, take my pencil, mark the holes, And then just use my punch to 
to punch the holes through. Now you can use a single punch like this or a lot of people have these types of punch as well. Whatever you have to hand. And if you don't, if you don't have a paper punch, you can just create the holes with a, a sharp knife or a scissors. So just improvise if, if you don't have those things to hand. I'm going to bind this all together with a stick. So I'll just show it to you on the finished one here. So the stick is uh, bound, binding the, the, the cover and the pages together with a piece of elastic. So first of all, you have to get your piece of stick, nice straight piece of stick. I'm just going to eyeball it there to be about that size. And then I'm going to cut one out for me. And more or less the same for Ella's one. Now, so once you have your cover punched and all your pages punched, um, you can put them all together by lining up all the holes. So let's line up the paper first and then the top cover and then the bottom cover. And if you have any difficulty um, lining them up, just get a little pencil and just push them through. Okay. And then you get your little piece of stick and that's going to hold everything together with an elastic. And use, let's say, um, a hair grip or you could use uh, like a paper clip or something that will help you uh, thread it through. So you just pull it onto the elastic like that. Yeah. And then just loop the lower end of the stick with the elastic and grabbing your, your card, you push the hair grip through, bringing the elastic with it. And then you'll see it coming out the other side and then loop it back in through all the holes. So here it comes out again and then just loop it over the top of the stick. Okay. You got it right? Excellent. And there you go. So We've got a few pages in there. You can add in any more at any stage by taking the elastics off and using one of your pages as a template to create holes in other pieces of paper and then just add them in. Um, so you can do that at any stage. So you can make a really big fat journal, especially if you like what's in it and you can maybe get attached to it. You can really put in as many pages as as it will hold. Then you just rebind it. Ella has the the lovely uh, separator that we made from from an old calendar. So that will work as well. And she has a lot more pages in her one. So once you have the cover done, what we're going to do is create a printed uh, decorative um, uh, cover to put on top of it and you can do all sorts of things. We're going to do printing today with with uh, leaf printing. You can do all sorts of decorative covers. You could paint a cover, you could um, put photographs, you could put a collage on it. The sky is the limit but today we're going to create some leaf printing to make a decorative cover and we're going to use uh, a technique um, called leaf printing which I'm sure you're you're familiar with um, and what you'll need for this is some leaves. So what we've done around the perimeter of the garden today is pick some some nice big um, sycamore leaves which have lovely veins on them. So they create lovely printed uh, patterns. Um, and I, we've we've picked them in. That's a, an ivy. Um, we've picked the sycamores in all sorts of different sizes, so you can um, you can get all sorts of different effects. Uh, we also have, um, you know, for a different shape, we have these uh, Bodleia leaves, but again, they have a nice raised vein in, on them, which are great for, um, for cr creating an, a, a lovely printed pattern. So 
as well as some leaves that you can pick from your garden or maybe out on your walk. So you'll need um, a paintbrush, um, any size paintbrush will do. Um, you're just going to use it to paint the back of the leaf. I'm using just pretty standard acrylics here in different colors. Poster paints or any basic uh, paint is, is, is good that has a, a kind of thickish consistency. So poster paint, acrylic paint are ideal. Also need some glue. So obviously uh, a little bit of water as well to, to clean your brushes as you go. So the first thing you do, just get a piece of scrap paper and I'm just using paper that's come off my printer that I didn't use. I'll give one to Ella here. Um, and I'm just using this as a backing for the, the leaf that I'm going to um, actually paint. And this creates its own nice patterns that you can use in your pages. You can cut them up and, um, and use them. So we're going to get some paint. What colour would you like, Ella? Blue. This blue? Okay. What else? Orange. Um, okay, so some orange. And I'm going to pick these kind of neon ones because um, I think they'll, they'll actually work really well. So get a little palette. I'm just using um, just an old um, meat tray or a vegetable tray. Um, they're handy to keep for, for using as palettes. And just, just um, put out a little bit of paint in whatever colours that you're using. So I'm going to use the green and the pink. And I might use a little bit of blue as well. Um, so you can use you can use all sorts of different size paper uh, for your print i've actually pre-cut mine to be the size of the the actual cover so um but you can you can print on bigger p pieces of paper even you know double the size of that um and it will um you know you can cut it up and you can use a little cropping bits that you you cut from it for other sort of things and I'll go through that later so I'm going to give um, Ella some some paper to print on as well what would you like maybe a, a darker one or a lighter one so we've got craft colored paper we've got colored sugar paper you want some plain white okay I'll give you a couple of those and I think I'm going to use the craft paper and see what it'll be like against those colours. And I'm going to get my, my paintbrush. Just take any little bits of dust or anything off the, off the leaf first. And going in with my, my pink paint, you just paint it over the back of the leaf. Now don't do this too thick because um, your print will be kind of smudgy um, so just take your time and get it covered and Ella you're doing yours in blue Ella's doing a smaller one now you can work out a kind of a pattern beforehand by laying down the leaves before you add the paint. So if you want to do a particular design, you can, you can work that out beforehand, before you print. So because my paper isn't that big, I'm just gonna print that now because I don't need the whole leaf. But do you see what I mean about the kind of negative um, effect that you get when you use the, the backing paper? You can cut that up and use that as a page within your journal if you need to. And then I get my piece of paper that I'm going to print on and I'm going to move that aside and I'm going to put my leaf face down on my paper and then I'm going to get another piece of scrap paper and I'll give one to you as well Ella and then using the, the, the paper that you put over the leaf you just use the base of your hand to just put the impression into the leaf. So you can use your hand or if you have one of these printing rollers you can also use that to to apply the pressure but it's very important that you just keep 
keep that held down and, ma and make sure that the leaf doesn't move on your paper underneath. If you don't have one of these, the back of your hand is, is good. Just be sure that you get all over the leaf. And then you can actually lift it, take it away, and if you're not happy, you can just keep going. So I'm happy enough with that. And I've got my, my first, my first colour. And Ella's got her first colour done there as well, which is lovely. Let me have a look, that's lovely, yes. I'm going to print my next colour now and uh, you're going to, are you going to pick a different leaf or yeah. I think I'll pick a different leaf as well. I think I might colour maybe two of these Budlia leaves. So using the same backing paper that I used before to, to print, I'm just going to clean my, my brush. And I'm going to use my second colour to paint the back of these two leaves. So like I say, don't put too much paint on at once because it just is inclined to get smudgy. And this is a softer leaf, so it'll probably give me a more compact kind of print. So I'm going to take that aside for a sec. And lay my piece of paper down again. And I want that one to go that way. And that one to go that way. And then put my cover sheet over again. And Ella's created the lovely, if you hold that up Ella, the, uh, the lovely negative pattern with that as well. So, as I say, you can use those in your, as pages in your uh, print. And, and my one has, the, has the, um, the extra green on it as well. So they're lovely cut up and put into your journal as pages. So now I'm just doing the same thing with these leaves to get the impression into the paper. Lift to my paper just to check them and I might do a little bit more on the tip of that. And I think they're good. So you can continue, you can t continue printing until, you know, you could put another colour on top of that uh, until you're happy with the print. You, you can also, uh, you know, print a second time uh, let's say Ella has just printed um, this colour here. She can get another piece of paper and use the same leaf when she takes it off to print again on another piece of paper. So if, if you press that down, you get a, a kind of a ghost print. It's a little bit lighter, but it's, it's a nice kind of, it would be a nice pa page for your, um, a background page for a photograph in your journal or something like that. So. It's just much lighter than the first print that she made, but it's, um, it's, it'll be nice as a, as a pattern on, on the background of a page. So we let those dry. Uh, maybe you can put something heavy on them, maybe the, the roller. Um, and I'll just show you some other things that you can print on as well while I'm here. So in the journal, you can get these little kind of envelopes. Um, you know, for saving seeds when you're out on your walk. Um, and you could print them as well. So I've done, I've done some of those prints and I'll just show them to you. You know, you can just print a leaf on, on, the, um, on top of the envelope and, and stick it into the back of your journal. Let's say you want to put it on your, on your back page. And you can put a few of them. These are for seeds and something else is for, for little buds or so once you're finished with your print and you're happy with it, are you happy with it now? Or are you going to do another colour? I think that's lovely. Uh, I'm going to add a bit more to it. <coughs> okay, so what colour are you going to do? The neon. The neon, yes, that would be lovely. So, and do you want a different leaf or do you, the Bodleia leaf, okay. So Ella's going to do a third colour and then we'll be ready to 
um, to attach them to the um, to the covers and they dry pretty quickly um, that's nearly dry now actually so we could we could nearly um, put it on straight away you can also you know I've left a little bit open at the top so you could put my journal on it or your name on it or whatever so you can put a title on the on the cover as well so you, you can use the, the cloth and get your last color lovely Okay, voila oh, that's lovely because that's lighter if you hold it up there it's lighter <coughs> lighter over the the imprint of the other one and it it's kind of translucent over it it's lovely isn't it so we'll just let those dry um, for a few minutes and then I'll show you how to just stick them onto the covers so now that our um, our prints are dry um, we're going to just stick them onto the, the front cover of um, the journal. And for that, you're just going to need some glue, whatever you have to hand at home. So PVA, um, PVA glue or Elmer's glue, whatever they, um, you call it, um, or Yoohoo, or just uh, a normal Pritt stick will do the job. Um, and just um, apply the glue to the, to the back of the print and print it, cover, put it onto the, to the cover. That's it. And there's a perfect space on the top of Ella's print there to, to put a, a title on her journal. Um, do you want to hold it up there, Ella? You know, so you could you could put a title in that lovely blue colour or or even the green colour um, to um, put your name on it or just my journal or nature or whatever you want to title it. Um, and as well as um, printing, um, you can, you can um, make covers out of all sorts of things. So I have a couple of examples here. These, these are fabric ones that I've, um, I've just got a piece of an old curtain um, that I got in a charity shop or something. and. It was just recycled and I just um, folded it over the, the front of the cover and then covered it in a piece of paper at the back so you've got an, an inner sleeve. Um, and this one is made from, we did some turmeric dye, in, you know the, the spiced turmeric, which if you got on your, ever got on your clothes you'll notice it's very, very hard to get off. Um, it's, very, it's perfect for actually dyeing things. Um, and this is just done on a, a piece of natural cotton. It was like an old recycled sheet and just used a, a tie dyeing technique um, on it to, uh, to create that pattern. And again, just um, folded it over the, um, the, uh, um, the front cover and taped it down. And then you can put a, a, a piece of paper over it to, to neaten it up. And We'd, we have done the journal today, as I said, in an A5 size, but you can do them in any size you want. So this is a little mini one that you could put in your pocket to bring, you know, on your little nature walks or have it on you all the time. So, so you can do them really big, you can do them really small, um, or this is a perfect size for general kind of, kind of use. Um, so now you need some inspiration for um, what to put in your journals and we're going to take you um, on a little walk around uh, the community garden here to show you some things that might inspire you to create some content. Ah, this is a good one to, uh, to pick. So maybe we can pick some flowers from that. It's a, it's a cabbage plant that's gone to seed. You can see the seed heads on it here and apparently they're really nice to eat. So we 
maybe pick a flower to to press yeah mm -hmm. um, we can see the seed pods on these as well so we might take one of these and see if if they come out so do you want to pick a flower and we'll put it into our book to press when we go back to the table yeah so this one is a valerian as far as I know and why don't we grab a couple of those do you want to pick one um, they're meant to be really good for attracting butterflies so we could press those in um, in our book and you can do a painting of it I think that would be great so we can wander over over here now so this is the deadly nightshade and it's a beautiful beautiful flower um, the nightshades is, is the same family as let's say potatoes or tomatoes um, but I think that would be a lovely flower to press as well so do you want to go up and grab one for me um, get a nice one lovely. that's brilliant so now that we've collected a few uh, flower specimens from around the garden why don't we press them um, in this book so if you if you can get any old pick book um, that uh, has a bit of space in it all you need is a little bit of paper or a, even a piece of tissue paper to put your flower in so do you want to put it in there and then spread it out as much as you can cover it and press it down and the best thing to do is have a like a weight on it, like a big rock or an, uh, another load of books is, is really good as well. And then leave it for a little while um, and uh, the, the flowers will dry out and flatten. So we put the, um, the cabbage one that we saved and the deadly nightshade, which is um, the lovely purple and our seed pods, we'll see if we can press them and put them in as well, dry out. And I have a few that we did, we did uh, last week. So that's the valerian um, pressed. Um, we've got a little wildflower that grows around the outskirts of the garden there. It's called um, charlock. Uh, so that's quite, quite prolific around the edges. And it's a beautiful little yellow flower. A little bit, looks a little bit like mustard. So you can press all sorts of flowers in, the, in, in a book like this. Leave them for, um, for a couple of weeks and they'll be perfect then to stick into your, into your notebook. Or you can even, you know, as you're walking, you can, you can pick a piece of, here's another piece of charlock that we did and we just stuck that in on the day and the, the book itself will press it eventually. So, you know, you can pick them as you're going along, stick them in. And when you get home, f try and find out some information about, um, about the flower and then you can write, write a little piece about it. Um, and in the PDF tutorial that I've included on the event page, there's loads of links about Irish wildflowers and Irish wildlife and um, loads of information that you can find to, um, to recognise these plants. I've also put a link to um, an app that you can use. So you can take a photograph of the flower and this app will actually recognise uh, the, flower, the flower and give you a, um, a description of it. A couple of other things that you could put into your, um, into your notebook. You know, just little... little um, uh, paintings that you can do when you're out and about when you're out in your walk you can sit down take a breath and use just a little watercolor set that you that, that you can bring with you to to make a little uh, painting and then you know when you can when you bring it home you can have you know the little offcuts of the prints that we did for the front cover and you can make little frames um, and, and put in descriptions of what the flower is this is one that Ella did of the, um, the one that we picked um, earlier of uh, the valerian. So, or you can do it while you're out and about, whatever you like. Um, and here we also have that page I mentioned with the envelope. Um, 
a little leaf robin and stuck it in the in the center of the of the page and and then stuck the back of the envelope um, on the back so that that can be punched like the other pages that we did earlier and put in and then you could put even something like you know one of your envelopes um, for your seed collection um, that you did your little print on earlier as well you know you can mix and match your pages you can um, you can take photographs you could you could put a little photograph in behind that and stick the uh, the page together but that's about it there are some suggestions for what you put into your um, your nature journal and I hope you can get out and about and record lots of things uh, in nature. Share any of your pages with me, that would be lovely. There's some links in the tutorial. So thanks a lot for taking part and thanks Ella for helping me and take care.